Hey, welcome to Dan's Models. This is John sitting with Dan looking at an HO scale old car. Uh-huh. <laughs> Sound familiar? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, still on the 50s kick here. Yeah. The only thing I can see here that I recognize is the Santa Fe logo. Right. So what what's up and what's up with this one? I like the um, rust on top by the way. That's this is a cool looking car. Thanks. Um this is a pretty much straight out of the box um Intermountain uh Santa Fe RR32 class uh refrigerator car. Is that what the RR stands for? Yeah. Santa Fe classes were the first and last letter of the whatever it was, so refrigerator is RR uh-huh. and then a sequence number. Okay. Um so um box cars are BX and and Tank cars are TK, et cetera. Uh-huh. That's, that's kind of cool. It actually makes sense. So you could see something like this and know what it was. Right. Just knowing that shorthand method that they use. That's right. that's pretty cool. The only thing confusing is um, they labeled uh, uh, gondolas and hoppers the same. So they're all GA. That's weird. What, yeah, I don't know. Why not HR? I, I don't know. Maybe they didn't want to get confused with their human resources department. <laughs> Maybe I don't know. Did they even have human resources departments back I think they then? Or call was it, it personnel? Yeah, it was yeah. called something else. Right? Yeah, I don't know. So I don't know what HR. I don't know what they could have been upset about. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. That's just the way they did it. But um, <laughs> there anyway, there aren't any answers to some questions. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But this is this is uh, not a kit built car. This is a, a ready to run car. Oh, that that's that's nice for a change. But not as much work. Right. Right. This is one of the few that I had already um, before we decided to do this 50s train run-by thing. You mean before you decided to make a 50s train? Well, yeah. Yeah. I didn't before have, I decided. I, didn't I have anything to do with me. I would no. have picked the easy way out. Right. Yeah, I know. But you know I me, have, I, I can't ever do that. I would have given in to the dark side of the force. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so uh, this is a car that I, I got when we were doing our uh, weathering and detailing rolling stock series. Oh, another one of those that we didn't have yeah. time for? Yeah, and I, I ended up not using it. Um, so I just had it sitting around, and then um, when I decided to do this train, I thought, well, this would be a good car to run with it. Yeah. So um, it just I brought goes, it out of mothballs. and just goes to show that if you... <laughs> see, there are some wives out there that are going to really dislike what I'm about to say because their husbands are going to hear it, and he's going to keep all his trains... Just goes to show, Dan, that if you have stuff, you should keep it around. Yeah. Because you'll end up using it eventually. Right. There you go. I think that's the old pack rat adage, isn't it? (laughs) Probably. Well, (laughs) with respect to trains, I probably qualify as a pack rat. In fact, I probably am the king of the pack rats. (laughs) I don't know. I bet there's some people out there. (laughs) Yeah, probably. There's probably people worse than me. Well, you know, it's like... One or two. (laughs) It's It's like the old newspapers, Dan, because someday you might read that newspaper from yeah. March 3rd, 1957 again. Right. <laughs> or maybe yeah. there's a coupon in it that you might <laughs> use in 50 years. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway. Um, but um, <laughs> this is pretty much stock. I I did change the couplers to Katie scale couplers. I don't think it had those on it to begin with. I think it had regular Katie's. Those are bigger, huh? Yeah, the, the bigger style. Other than that, um, I did have to, I don't remember which side, but I, one of these stirrups in the middle here uh-huh. broke, so I had to replace that with an A-line a metal stirrup. Right. But um, other than that, I pretty much left it alone. Um, it's already pretty detailed. Um, it. I, I. This is one of the few cars that I didn't put uncoupling levers on. Um, oh, yeah, I'm seeing that now. What, and the, the reason for that is because the builder's photo has... That I, the only photo that I have of this is a, I have a, a book from the Santa Fe Historical Society, I think, on um, refrigerator cars, and it has a, like a builder's photo of one of these. And these are these are actually I think this car was like from the '40s, actually. And a long time ago, they used to use a different style of uncoupling lever that went over the coupler. Um, that's how it is in that photo. But I, to make it appear like it's later, I, sometimes they change that later. Oh, but I don't have a photo of one, so I was kind of waiting for to get some better reference before I do that. Hmm. Maybe somebody we know at the railroad club would know. Maybe. I just need to to get a good reference photo of one and see if, if they were still like that later on. Essentially, all I really did to this one was weather it a little bit. So um, one of the things I noticed on a lot of these cars, um, and this is a bit of a cheat, but a lot of them uh, were reweighed and re-stenciled. Yeah, I was going to um, say, I see a little patch there. Right. Um, well, this, 
this still has a date of 1940 on it. It really should have a later date, but I was in a hurry, so I didn't want to go to that much trouble. You can always change it later. I can always change it later. So what I did was I took some masking tape and just cut out a little rectangle and, uh, you know, pasted it over the the area that oh, was restenciled before you've weathered it right and it's then i took like a patch i took yeah. some uh pale colored powder and dusted the whole side to kind of grime it up mm -hmm. and then when i peeled that off that part's still unweathered so it looks like it's been patched <laughs> actually that's just the original color <laughs> yeah but you know what though okay two things one it looks good like plausible uh -huh. and two i mean really when it's rolling down the track I can't even see that without glasses anyway, so I wouldn't right. care what it said on it. <laughs> yeah. It could say 2015 and it wouldn't matter to me, or 2016, whatever. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, so, so, you know, it is. If, if I wanted to be really super hyper authentic, I would probably have, you know, changed that. But I, I just didn't have time. And you know, you, know? you can always go back and do it. I later, can always do it at some right? point, especially right. if it's still basically uh, untouched. You can right. probably just take out, take some rubbing alcohol and rub off the whatever's there right and put it yeah redecal it or, or just yeah paint over it or whatever there's a lot of ways you could do it sure but you know I, also working on a bit of a deadline here so i you know had to get a bunch of cars done in, in a relatively short period so yeah you know trying to expedite things and i did a little bit of uh it's rusty. rust rust colored powder on the roof just subtle I, I, my goal with these uh with this vintage train is to try to make them look like in service Hardworking but well maintained cars. Yep. So nothing too decrepit. Not a lot of like really heavy rusting or anything like that. Something I'm noticing, and maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong, but and, and it's a little surprising to see a model like this. If if my perception is correct, those aren't even doors on it, are they? I mean, those are not separately. Isn't that just molded on to look like a door? This. Well, yeah. Uh, I think they are, but r r most of these refrigerator cars had flush doors. Did it look flat like that? Yeah, because because they just were insulated. Phony. Yeah, it just looks phony to me from here. The, but they opened. Um, they would open out like this. Uh huh. Instead of sliding. Yeah. Um, like a box. Most box cars have a door that slides. Yeah, but it should look more separated. Now on the camera, it's probably fine, but looking in person, it should look more separated than that. Well, but, I think they did fit pretty tight because they yeah. were insulated. They they didn't want to uh, have you know the coal cold leak out it could just be a, a misperception of mine because these cars were probably long gone by the time i would have ever seen one but this probably yeah. is what they look like yeah know? well ice ice refrigerator cars are pretty much done i think by the 70s right is that what this is yeah yeah well the hinges on the outside on the ends on the ends of the car in other words so that the op they open toward the center of the car whereas most other railroads the hinges are on the inside and they open toward the ends of the car um, but it had to do with the, the way the Santa Fe ice docks worked, um, at least initially. Uh, I think eventually Santa Fe changed them and made them like everybody else, but uh, that's something I, I read about in one of the books that I've got. Okay. Scar also has the, the map on the other side. Uh, one side says the Scout, and the other side has the Santa Fe map, which is a typical thing Santa Fe did back in the day. Do, do you know when they stopped doing that? Not off the top of my head. Or, or approximately, I, like, decade? Uh, probably in the 50s. Oh, okay. So, because there was a boxcar that we reviewed on a product review fairly recently or sometime sometime within the past, I don't know, few weeks that had that map on it, too. Yeah. So, maybe that was one of the uh, vintage cars, like an Intermountain vintage that you were building. Yeah, it was. Building, um, yeah. I, I know that... Um, I do have that information somewhere, and I have read it. I just can't recall it right now, so I'm sure there's probably somebody out there who's going to tell me. Well, if it wasn't in the 50s, <laughs> you're going to get some hate mail now. Well, I'm just, it might not be, you know. Dan promised I, it was in the 50s. I, I, I normally model the 90s, guys, okay? So I'm not as up no, on you're the this expert. old you, no, school I'm, stuff. I'm holding you to that. If I find out <laughs> it, was in the, it wasn't in the 50s, you're going you're gonna to get, you're going to get a message from me, too. Yeah, well, I, I know that. <laughs> I do know that they actually had different styles of maps too. They they, they changed the design of the map book uh, yeah. once or twice. So um, isn't that funny? Like as if places change. You know, like maps don't well, usually no, but change. They, they changed the style. I mean, I think this map has all straight lines, and they had, yeah. they had another map that had more curved lines. 
it was probably probably more accurate, right? Probably, but this yeah. was probably easier to mask. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> so, yeah. Or whatever they did. Yeah, straight know. lines are much easier than curved lines. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Well, wow, it's a cool looking car. Yeah, I like it. It's the only mm. only one like it I have. I'm glad it was yeah. not a kit because man, you just have to build everything these days for this '50s train. Yeah, well, I built an. I don't know how many kits I built, but probably nine or ten. So. I think I've seen nine or ten in, yeah. the, in the past few weeks of Dan's models. Yeah. Jeez. So it's a lot. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I guess we'll find out uh, next week if we have another built 50s train model. Yeah. So we'll see you then. Okay. <laughs>